And speaking of fear, we actually got a question submitted by one of the listeners, which is why are managers often so afraid of having code changes go to production automatically? Is it that they don't trust the developers? Who would like to take this one? Feel free to come on if you need to. I'll take a start at this. So I wouldn't say all managers and, and, and I've seen teams have fear of going straight production, straight to production quite often. And it's, it, it's not, and so when we talk about trust of the developers, it's the trust of the code base. And so what the practice that we use is making sure that we have, you heard Mike say earlier about the feedback. Well, another feedback that we have that, that lets us know that we are, that we have good quality is the test, the unit test. It provides, it, it provides immediate feedback to the quality of our code, right? If we've broken something else, uh, and, and we, we adhere pretty strongly to test-driven. It, it's not like we do it for absolutely everything, but if there is a, if there is a business or a logic, a, a logic change to some sort of business, we'll make sure that we'll have tests around that. And that's our immediate feedback loop in seconds and milliseconds. And so um, if, if people, I'm not going to say managers, if people understand that that is your safety net that will catch you, then, then your ability, your, your confidence to go into production is higher, right? If you don't have that feedback loop, then your confidence is going to be unknown. Like, I have no idea if this is going to break something. Well, when we write code, we have a pretty darn good idea if it's going to impact something else. So, and yeah, it's not don't trust the developers. They may not trust that the code um, has that safety net. And so that's our feedback loop. And if if we don't if it doesn't have test around it, then um, we our first thing that we do is we write characterization tests for for any legacy code, right? So I think if we want to, we can dive into what is characterization test and and that sort of thing. But anyway, so well, I've actually uh, I've got a sort of a follow up on what what you're talking about, Wyatt. Um, you're talking about how the unit tests interact with deploying to production automatically. And I, to go back to the question, is it that they don't trust the developers? I'm going to say in, in a brief, yes. But like you said, it's also they don't trust the developers, but not as people. They, they, they don't trust the code effectively to go successfully. And you know what? I don't blame them. I don't blame them because in an environment where you don't already have other things, like these, my point is these practices inter, interweave together. It takes several of them executed together to create, you know, software the way the way that we like to create software, okay. including deploying to production automatically. I would never take a code base that didn't have automated tests with a team that wasn't used to that working in that way, um, and say, let's hey, let's turn on the switch and just deploy every commit to production automatically. I think that's a terrible idea. What you need in place first is good architecture that enables good testing, that enables a culture of refactoring and safety, then we can start deploying things to production automatically. And so it's, it's kind of the, the, um, yeah, the interdependency of these practices that makes any one of them work. Yeah. I don't want to belabor it, but I've got yet a third point. <clears throat> is it all right if I bring that one up? Go for it, man. All right. Well, I mean, part of this idea is do we trust the developers or not? But I think part of what you have to look at is what is the system that those developers are working within, which is part of what John was bringing up. And that is, is do you have these interrelated practices which support each other? Or, for instance, and here's one of the things that I was seeing is kind of like, here's the problem. There are some organizations that are driving so hard for the developers to be done, quote unquote, That's right. that they call things done early. That's right. And then they basically pass it off to a tester and then the tester goes, oh, no, you're not done. That's right. <laughs> and then throws it back to the developer. And so in that kind of an environment where they're incentivized to call themselves done, but not necessarily quality, professional, you know, safe, um, <clears throat> then it's the system that's actually um, that they're working in, which is actually in part at fault. So you can have systems where, yeah, you can actually go straight to production but you've set up the safeties and you've set up the incentives so that they're not just about being done. It's about being working and being right. 